Hello class! Welcome to lesson number 16 of the Arduino Basics tutorial series. My name is Adam and in this one we're going to be using a photoresistor and an LED light to create a sort of night light that automatically turns on when the lights go low and automatically turns on when the lights go up. Let's jump right into the wiring diagram for this one. In order to complete this lesson you're going to need your Arduino, your breadboard, an LED, a 220 ohm resistor, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, and a little photoresistor module. In order to wire it up, we're already familiar with wiring an LED. So my LED is going through the 220 ohm resistor into my board, I'm using pin number six, and then it's being ground out through the ground row. My photoresistor is going from one leg through a 10 kilo ohm resistor to ground, and on that same leg, also running into pin A0 on my Arduino board. The other pin of my photoresistor is running to the voltage row. So the voltage is running unresisted, the ground is resisted, and that aligns with the connection to pin A0 on my board. That's it for the wiring, very straightforward wiring for this one. Let's head on over to the code and figure out how we can write our code to make this work. Here we are in our coding interface for lesson number 16. The first thing we're going to need to do is set up a couple of variables in order to keep track of the light value that we're going to be reading in the room as well as our pins. So I've declared an integer photo pin for the A0 for the photoresistor, a pin LED pin for pin number 6 which is where our LED is plugged in, and an integer to store the light value which is going to range from 0 to 1023. Now we'll jump into our setup function where we are going to set up our pin modes and our serial monitor. Our serial monitor gets set up on 9600, and we set up our pins for the LED and the photo pin. Our LED is going to be an output, and our photoresistor is going to be an input. Now we're going to enter into our loop function. The first thing we're going to have to do is actually read the light value in the room using the photoresistor. We do this using an analog read. Light val, which is my pre-declared integer, is now equal to an analog read on the photoresistor pin. This will read the light value and store it in light val as an integer from 0 to 1023. Let's print that out to the serial monitor for debugging purposes. So I do a serial.print line with the light valve. This allows me to use it for debugging to help kind of set the values that I need in my particular room or setting that I'm trying to use. I'm going to put a half a second delay after this. And then I'm going to actually push this code out before I do anything else. Heading over to the serial monitor, we're going to have a look at what range of values I'm getting. So my values are currently reading around 728 based on the lighting setup I have in the room. Now if I turn the main lights off, you'll see that my values go a little bit below 300, okay? So this gives us an idea of what kind of a threshold I would want in this room for lights on versus lights off. So somewhere around 300, 350, 400 even. See the range is going all the way up to 700, then all the way into the twos. That gives us an idea as to what to set as our threshold. For this one, I'm going to use a threshold of 400, which works well for the room that I'm in. But you may need to use a different value depending on the light values that you're reading in your room. So I'm going to use an if statement to compare my light value to my threshold. So if the light value read in the room is greater than 400, that means that my lights are on. Okay, so you may want to use a different number. If my lights are on in the room, then I want my LED to be turned off. So digital right, LED pin low is going to turn the LED on my board off if the lights in the room are on. Then I can do an else statement, and I don't need to put a threshold in the else because it's already been covered in my if statement. So my else statement in this case means that the lights in the room are off because if the light value is bigger than 400, my lights were on, else in any other situation, the lights are off, which means I want to turn the LED on. So let's push this code out and we'll have a look at the board and see how it responds to the lights being on or off. So here we have the lights are off and the LED is on. When I turn on the lights, you'll see the LED turns off. Lights, LED, lights, no LED. Success. That's all we needed to do for the main lesson. Now let's have a look at the extension for this lesson. Awesome. So we've already got ourselves a working night light that automatically turns off and on depending on the light levels in the room. For the extension, let's just do something simple this time because the lessons are going to get a lot more complex than the next few. Why don't we say that instead of the light being off, we always want it to be on, but just very dim when the lights are on, and then it brightens when the lights go off. So you'll just need to play a little bit with how you're writing the LED values. 
uh, and then just get it to be dim when the lights are on and full brightness when the lights are off. That's it for the extension. Let's hop over and look at the challenge. For the challenge for this lesson, we're going to test a little bit of math and make sure that you can separate number ranges. So what I want to happen this time is instead of just having two states for the LED, either off or on or dim or full brightness, I want to create a dynamic range. So I want us to set two threshold values. One threshold for the bottom, anything below that and the LED is on at full brightness. Uh, an upper threshold, anything above that and the LED is completely turned off. And in between those values, I want your LED brightness to dynamically change, to increase in brightness as the light level goes down or decrease in brightness as the light level goes up. And this is gonna require you to set two thresholds. So for me, I used 300 and 700, which gave me a range of 400 in the middle that I needed to dynamically turn into values from zero to 255. So getting, getting into some math. So let's just say, for example, I was going 300 to 700. So I have 400 data points in between there that I need to turn into 255 data points. Now you're gonna be dealing with different thresholds depending on the room that you're in, how big of a span of brightness that you want. Okay, so you're gonna to have to do that math. Now also remember, you're going to need to use analog writes when you're going to your LED, not digital writes. Okay, because you're gonna be writing a value, a brightness value from zero to 255. So that's your challenge for this lesson. Uh, a little bit trickier on the math side of things, but have a go at it, see how you do. Uh, and then hopefully I'll see you back here in lesson number 17, where we're gonna really up the ante a little bit. We're gonna start working with SD cards, uh, starting creating something that's a little bit more of a functional tool. Code's gonna get a lot longer. That's okay, stick with it. I think you'll be fine. Thank you very much for watching the Arduino Basics tutorial series. My name is Adam, and I'll see you back here in lesson number 17. If you like what we're doing, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to see more. Have a great day.